<laughs> Let's begin with a word of prayer. Yes, please. By all means. <laughs> all right, I'll, I'll start. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. I thank you for these students. We thank you for the awesome break that we're about to take. I just ask you to be with us, help us to glorify you again, Lord, in what we do this day. In my prayer, Lord Jesus. Amen. Okay, so, um, you know, I spent a couple hours reading about geometry last night, and it just, ah, I don't know, I can't do it. It's, um, it, it, not, nothing, nothing against geometry, it's just, uh, uh, I have more to say at the moment about infinite products and some, so I should do that. And, um, there, there are some, some definitions missing in Gamelin. Um, in terms of his, oh, come on, tell me I didn't, his uh, definition thing. So it's, it's, it's better for us not to do it because I feel like there are a couple of pieces missing from that section that would be very frustrating to you guys as you tried to work out the homework more seriously. That said, I did leave a problem or two from that section that I originally signed just in case some of you had worked it again. They're essentially bonus problems now. Okay, I did work one of them, the one about the um, circumference of a hyperbolic disk, and it actually does make sense. I worked it out. It took me about 20 minutes but it does require some, you have to know what's meant by the word hyperbolic disk, right? What's a hyperbolic disk? Well, a hyperbolic circle would be the set of points which are equidistant with respect to the hyperbolic distance function, which is defined in that section. So if you do decide, do decide to work that, that problem, the hyperbolic distance is the integral over gamma, uh, twice the integral over gamma, the modulus of dz over, do, 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 I think, 1 plus modulus of z squared is it one minus one plus like ah man <sighs> shnikes that I don't remember but anyway it's plus or minus that so you actually have to first you have to figure out what it I mean this is this is the hyperbolic distance function um, along uh, along this curve like so if I go gamma like this is gamma you have to do this integral that gives you the distance along the curve with respect to the hyperbolic metric and um, in that section Right before it, it tells you the hyperbolic distance from zero to z. If you use that, that would if you set you know the hyperbolic distance from zero to z equal to a constant, say rho. Look at the collection of all such points. That would define the the hyperbolic circle. And then you can you you should look at that curve and calculate the length around that curve. And that's what will work out to be um, what was it two pi cinch of rho or something. And um, anyway, just. I can tell you more about that. I actually have worked that problem, but that's all I want to say about that section, except to say that if you do read it, it's very interesting because it gives you a way you can write down non-Euclidean geometries in terms of complex, complex coordinates. You can um, give a metric, a, a notion of dis a distance function to the plane or to the, to the Poincaré uh, sphere, oh, wait a minute, Riemann sphere, excuse me, um, <coughs> or the plane, either Euclidean of course, you know and love from Calc 3, you've calculated arc length with respect to the Euclidean metric all, all your life. Then that thing, the hyperbolic, right? And then there's also a, um, the spherical metric. You have these three different uh, geometries that you can study using complex variables and little subsets of the complex plane. It's, and um, it is interesting because, of course, those give you actually concrete models of things where in the, the parallel lines in these things would be the geodesics, the shortest paths between two points, and the geodesics in the hyperbolic model um, they're actually circles, um, well, they, they, they're, they're circles that go to the edge of the hyperbolic disk, and so you can have a violation of the parallel postulate, like you could have a, here's one quote-unquote line, which is a circle, you take a point off that line, there's not just one parallel line that goes through that point, there's like lots of other circles that go through the point, so you have an example of a geometry which satisfies all the other axioms of the standard Euclidean geometry, but not the parallel postulate. So once you have this model, then it gives you an explicit realization of geometries which are not um, Euclidean. And so this has been known since the mid-19th century. And um, I mean, Gauss was aware of these things. And that, uh, that actually was the original non-Euclidean um, geometry that was given by, uh, Lobby uh, was it Lobachevsky? Or I think it was. Um, anyway, so if you're taking geometry, it's kind of interesting to read that section to and appreciate that those are like specific formulas for a non-Euclidean geometry, not a not a formal axiomatic system, but actually a point set with specific formulas for calculating distance between points and stuff, which is, which is interesting. 
All right, I said I wasn't going to say anything about that. It seems like I um, failed in that mission. All right, um, <clears throat> so the Mittag Leffler. What does the Mittag Leffler theorem say? And I think I should project, probably, but I probably shouldn't at the start. So, what does the Mittag Leffler theorem say? Now, I used to think that Mittag Leffler was um, two people. I mean, it doesn't seem like a very do you know any, I mean, like, I mean, you go look in the phone book, find, find, find all the mid-tech lefflers that live around here. Um, I don't think you'll find many. Um, <laughs> so, uh, but it actually is one person. His full name is, his full name is like Gustav Magnus Mittag Leffler or something. I mean, what an awesome, audacious name, right? Um, but this guy, you know, sometimes you'll hear this, this story that we don't have a Nobel Prize in math because this guy, um, supposedly had an affair with Nobel's wife or something. If you investigate this, it's a vacuous rumor. Um, I have a link in the notes to a, an article at the Fields Institute which explains the actual history. And, um, but it's a popular rumor that's spread by even professors in this very institution. So, um, <clears throat> but anyway, I don't correct them because I think it's a fun rumor and I let it live. So, um, but it's in fact, I mean, I do think there's something, there's some merit to why math doesn't have a field, you know, why there's not a mathematics Nobel Prize. Instead, we have this Fields Medal, which is offered every about four years to promising, uh, aspiring mathematicians under the age of 40, which have made meaningful contributions to the international mathematics community. I mean, to get a Fields Medal means a whole lot more than a Nobel Prize. Barack Hussein Obama will never win a Fields Medal. He's too old. Um, <coughs> Let's see here. N neither will I. Well, I guess I've got uh, three years. I don't know. I got a TikTok. I, I got to do something. <laughs> don't worry. Th there's really not much danger of it. Um, okay, so here's the Mittag Leffler theorem. You get a, a set of points, ZK. These have to be distinct. And let's just say nicely separated. Now, a way of saying that more 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 precisely is to say there's no accumulation point. So every one of these points, you can find a little open disk where the only thing in that little open disk is just that one point. In other words, all the, all the points are isolated, right, with respect to this, this sequence. And also, we look at pk of z equals to something like a sum, say j equals 1 to m of c sub j over z minus zk to the jth power. In other words, this is a polynomial in the reciprocal of z minus zk, right? OK, with me so far? Now, of course, these functions are singular at that sequence of points. Right, they have division by zero. Um, if c sub m is not equal to zero, they'd have a pole of order m at zk, um, that particular k. Well, the theorem says this, is that there exists f of z, which is meromorphic. Meromorphic on d. Now, OK, this is nicely separated in domain d. I forgot about the domain. Kind of matters whose poles um, are that sequence. I mean, so it's got that same sequence of poles and such that f of z minus pk of z is analytic at zk or holomorphic at zk, if you like, for each k. So what this is saying is, if you give me a set of singularities that are at some isolated sequence of points, right, then I can give you a meromorphic function which models those singularities, right, precisely 
and that's analytic everywhere else. That's pretty neat. Let me give you an example of how this, how this plays out. A few examples. Um, what if you had pk of z, 1 over z minus k? And this is for k in the natural numbers. And of course, the natural numbers do not include 0. Everyone knows that. Let's see here. So the naive thing to do would be what? What, what, what function would you think would give you back these at singularity? So I mean, you want a singularity at 1, at 2, at 3, at 4. You just, how about just add these together, right? Just add these together. That would be the, sort of the naive thing to do. Some k equals 1 to infinity of 1 over z minus k. I mean, so the, the first thing you might try is just to basically sum over um, the principal parts that you've been given. Now, is this, is this meromorphic? What, what is it? Oh, no. That means I forgot to fix the stupid. Come on. Will that let me do it when we're doing it? All right. 